going on guys? Coach Joe here at the Lion's Den and this is part two of how to start your own gym business or business in general for an entrepreneur. I think all these tips will really help you. So what we're going to do is cover a bunch of topics, get way more into the business of things and I'm going to give you guys my experience. Hopefully it can help you. You're going to know how much I've spent on equipment, how I got money, you know, that whole deal because everybody asks that question. So get your pen, paper ready, start taking some notes and these are really going to be valuable principles that if you apply, you're going to see major changes in your business and yourself. It's going to be awesome. Let's go. Okay guys, so for the first two things that we want to cover the topics uh, for building a business is number one is you're a marketer. A lot of people in the fitness industry get this wrong. They are awesome at what they do in terms of strength and conditioning or boot camps, health, whatever it is, but they lack being a marketer. So it's like if you have great skills in something, but you don't know how to market, you're never going to get to the people that you need to service. So I always start off the back by just saying that because I was in that position where I was a great strength and conditioning coach, uh, but I was like, how do I get these people? And I couldn't get the people, but being able to understand marketing and how to do that has led me to my market of people for me to service. So uh, a lot of people, like I said, don't understand that. Um, you want to understand and study that. So put more time into reading old school marketing magazines or go and talk to marketers, you know, go on YouTube and figure out how the fitness marketing industry works. A couple of references that I put is a book called Dot Com Secrets by Russell Brunson. Awesome book. It's very current and up to date. So I would check that out and read through that, especially if you want to do online marketing, uh, which is kind of huge right now. Then we have anything by Seth Godin and the guy who I learned pretty much everything from starting was Elliot Hulse. If you guys know Elliot Hulse, he is a professional marketer. He makes all his money on online products and he does a great way of captivating his audience. Um, from there, then you want to attract the business and then show your skills. So once you know how to market to those people, that is when your skill set is valuable. So getting those people in the door in front of you through marketing, then you can execute on what you're good at. So. Number two is going to be the target market and your niche or niche, depending on, I don't even know how people say it, but uh, this is huge, okay? So you have to know the people that you want to service, okay? Understanding them and then getting to them. So my uh, niche market is high school through college and adults ranging from the ages of 18 to 45 and interested in strength sports, growing stronger or like strong man, okay? So I don't do tons of boot camps. Uh, that's just not my thing. I'm not the kettlebell expert or anything like that. I'm not the weight loss guy. I get people strong. That is my main focus. That's my demographic. You know, those that's the age range is from the 18 to 45, and those are the people I'm trying to curtail to. So the other big thing to be aware of is pick the people that you want to be around. So um, you don't want to be around people who are energy suckers. And I made this mistake at my first job where I was training, you know, housewives, I was training kids, I was training everybody. And I would get a couple clients that I really enjoyed who were really into strength training, but I was wasting a ton of my energy on these people who didn't want to do what I wanted to teach them. And that ended up leading me to be miserable or unhappy. And ultimately one of the reasons why I left that job and got a regular job is because I was so unhappy dealing with that clientele. So you really need to understand that target market and surround yourself with those people because you're going to be around them all the time. All right. Uh, the other thing is they want results and most importantly, they want to be entertained, right? People come to me, one, because of my knowledge base, but two, because of my personality. They love being around me. I make them feel awesome and appreciated, and I'm enthusiastic. I make them laugh, and sometimes I'm like a psychologist. So I think, yeah, I have that. You're a psychologist. A lot of the people that I end up training tell me their personal life stories, that we get involved with all sorts of craziness, but they trust me. And that's one of the biggest things is when you can get people's trust, right, through the steps that we're going to be talking about, especially your story, which is coming up, um, and just understanding them as a client, that is where the real money is. Um, so make sure that you give them results and you entertain them. Okay, that's important. So the other thing is, is study and understand your niche market. Where do they hang out? 
What do they like doing? You know, are they on forums on T Nation? Probably not anymore. <laughs> are they on YouTube? So it's like go into fellow YouTubers, right? Comment on their videos. It starts conversation. They're gonna see your name. They're gonna click. Maybe see your channel. You know, throw in like you know your Instagram or get involved with groups, Facebook groups. Uh, understand where they are, and that is where you want to get your message in front of them. Okay. So those are my first two. All right, I took a picture of it, I'll put it up right here so you can take notes, and then now we're gonna get to the other two that I wanna talk about. All right, so guys, now moving on to topics three and four as we dive deeper into how to grow the business. This number three is so crucial, and that is your story. What's your story? Who are you? And some things that can really help build your story are challenges you face, like, with me, I had so much adversity in my life where I had a heart condition, uh, multiple gyms have closed for me to get to this point, and that really just ties people in to relate. It's not like you're trying to go over the top or be like fake or anything like that, it's just real and something that people can connect with. So you have to dive deep into yourself and try to figure out what's your story, what's your background, and how can you leverage that to have people want to be around you. So I always like to indicate my strengths and my weaknesses, and uh, something like I said, you can relate to people. Uh, they're looking for somebody who can mentor them or it's through your experience. So your story is crucial because that is going to be how you market yourself. And then the way that you market yourself, which this is, it's huge. And if you don't wanna do this, you really shouldn't be involved with any type of business uh, because you're gonna have to put out so much free content before anything happens right? It's going to be nuts. And the reason we want to do free content is to give people value, right? Nobody's going to show up and pay $85 an hour for me to do personal training if they don't know my value. So you may be saying, well, what do I do for free? So I give you guys some ideas. You can do articles for either yourself or other website platforms, or maybe people, you know, just email them. It's super simple. Say, Hey, I like writing, I wanna write an article for you. Is there any topics that you would want or need for your website? People love when they don't have to write an article, right? It's, it's easy for me to say, yo, Brian, Aldrew, Omar, can you guys send me a video and I'll throw it up on my YouTube channel? Because guess what, I don't have to make a video for that week. So just email somebody, ask people, don't be afraid to ask. Uh, right now, big one's podcast. So I know I haven't started a podcast yet, but it's on my to-do list. And you can do a lot of things with podcasts, which we'll get into probably in another video series. Uh, there's also free programs, which I give away randomly or all the time, free 30-day challenges, free strength programs, you name it. Uh, there's free training, which I do often sometimes. I'm like, hey, come in for 30 minutes. We'll do like a fitness evaluation or strength eval, see where you're at. And people will then be like, wow, this guy's awesome. He knows what he's talking about. Then you kind of hook him into something else. Um, YouTube, what you're watching right now, this is free content, free, awesome, high quality content that I give away for free, and this is how I market myself to you guys. So it's super simple, um, and the cool thing about YouTube or saving those videos is they can always be used later down the road. You can put together video packages, video series, just like this, it never goes anywhere. Uh, one of the most basic ones, which we do, is the newsletter. So a weekly newsletter where it's, you're gonna grow that email list, you know, and then you can just start, writing really good informative articles and getting them out to that list. So when you provide value to people, the other thing that's nice is you get testimonials. So whenever I do programs or I train people for free, I used to do free Sundays uh, when I was working at the garage gym. Here, we always have free Fridays. We're actually giving away the entire month of November completely for free. And the whole point of that is to get word of mouth going, to have people with awesome experiences. We take their picture, we say, hey, can you just give us like a sentence or two on what you thought of this? And we can blow them up all over the place. Then from there, uh, people wanna hear from other people. So I can sit here and talk all day, but if I had 10 people or 10 of your friends talk about how awesome I am, just kind of like how people go to the movies, and then they're like, yo, you have to see this movie blank, or you've gotta watch Stranger Things, it's amazing. You're way more probable to go and do that because someone you trust, someone you love, told you that you had to do it. So that's another great part of testimonials is other people talking to other people. And when you create the value, people will come. People are, like, if there's value there, 
you will start getting clients over a steady rate and things will start building. So these are just my tips three and four. All right, take that picture. I'm gonna put it up now, write any notes down, and then we're gonna dive into the next segment now. So what you're gonna to have to do is once you've established what kind of niche market you have in your business, whether it's gonna be an LLC, you wanna go for that corporation, franchise, whatever, everybody's gonna be a little bit different. So that is something for you to decide. Uh, and you're finally getting things moving, you're gonna to wanna to know about equipment. So what has worked for me, what I have done is, I really realized you don't need fancy. And when I first got into this, I was like, oh, I need all new this, all new that. And it was just so expensive and really unrealistic for what I was trying to do. So I decided to make pretty much everything that I had in the garage, whether it was using chlorine jugs from me being a pool man, you know, I was putting together uh, sleds with someone who welded them for me, and I had car tow straps, and all those things would have cost hundreds and hundreds of dollars, right, if I wanted to have the new version, but said I made it. So I would say in the entire garage that I had, which had a lot of stuff, um, I definitely had some of the basics that I got from Rogue, like a squat rack, you know, a barbell, I got some kettlebells, and that was kind of what cost the most. I'd say it was anywhere from two to $5,000, uh, but that was over, the course of a year. So if you just put a little bit of money aside uh, over time, that's really not that big of an investment. And anything with gym equipment, it lasts for forever. So it's a good investment and the resale point is always pretty high as well. Uh, to make that money, which I was just talking about, I worked over time in the pool job. Anything I made over time is what I used to buy the equipment. So anything over 40 hours that week, I got time and a half, and that's what I put towards the equipment in the garage gym, uh, but I was still trying to find things. Like I remember I was getting tires off the side of the road. You know, I would make my own boxes, which cost 30 bucks compared to $120 off Rogue. So you can kind of see how much money you're saving long term. Uh, the other thing I did is, for Christmas, right on my birthday, I asked for either equipment that I needed or just money, and that's what I put towards my dream. So you have to think about the return investment or the ROI on your dream, right? The re return investment of having a dream created, you can't match it. So that's how you have to just change that mindset a little bit. Uh, the other thing is people will come for you right or the community that you're building so don't think that people are only come to my gym because i need this amount of equipment right or i need to look fancy often that's not the case if people feel like they belong and they see that value just in you or the people or what you're creating they're going to stick with you and be with you the entire time and when you get those little pieces of equipment it just gets them excited right if they came in the door and we had everything that they needed well then what's next so if you start off basic and simple and you always are increasing and adding things, it keeps them uh, inspired and motivated and wanting to come and it's a good business model for you. That's what I've done. Now, a lot of you guys are probably wondering, you know, about the money and how much it costs to have everything you see in the current gym. So for that, I did not have enough money and what I did is I took out a business loan and that ran me about 30K. So that was a business loan I took out. I'm really not a big proponent of, you know, owing money, but for this is something that I had to do and you know, I just pay that off chunk by chunk. Um, and with the bigger space and more people, I did need equipment for me to actually do what I was trying to do and keep the people happy. So it's always about checks and balances. Um, the gym total cost, so this is you know around the four year period, I would say 75 grand uh, for all the equipment, all that kind of stuff. And then in terms of like rent deposits and troubles that I've had or getting people to work on things in the gym, it was about 100K total. Now, I just have four years because if you think about it over a four year time span, um, 100K, you know, making all sorts of different odd ends meet, isn't that bad? Up front, that is a ton of money. Now, everybody's different, but like I said, my uh, goal was to start small and progressively work bigger, so that was over time. Uh, and the other thing I had as a little side note here is you definitely need a following. So by doing what we talked about in the previous segment of you know your YouTube or your testimonials or your social media, your newsletter, whatever, you are going to need a group of people, right, to get things going. So if you just are opening up a gym, you have no following, you're just doing it, it's gonna be tough. It's gonna be really hard and unless you are just making things happen left and right, it's probably not gonna work. So make sure before you commit to a facility or a lease or a contract or anything like that, 
that you have a following with you to get things automatically rolling because it's all about cash flow and bringing money into the bank. So here is the big secret everybody wants to know. How much do I make? And I don't even care, I'm just gonna tell you because that's what I'm about, I'm about being real with you guys. So I make between 30 and 50K, and I say that because it depends on how well things are going. Sometimes we have high months, sometimes we have low months. Sometimes I'm trying to invest in the business so I don't take paychecks. I haven't cashed a paycheck in almost four weeks. Why? Because I have the minimal amount of money I need to pay my bills, right? Uh, get my groceries so I can stay fed and pay rent or whatever that is. And then I just take the rest and invest it back in the business, which is often the hardest thing to do, but it would, I would say that's the most important thing to do uh, long term. So that's how much I make roughly. And like I said, I only take what I need. But what I have noticed is that when I was working the pool job right before this and having some other you know side end work, I was making a great amount of money. It was awesome, right? Money is freedom. However, my quality of life is a lot better now than it is with that job because this is what I'm passionate about. The other thing too is I can control everything. I control you know, how hard I work. If something's not going right, I can change that. It's all in my decision. So you have to just think about, do you wanna work for somebody or do you wanna work for yourself? And I like that quote, if you're not making your dreams come true, you're helping somebody else create theirs. Right or wrong, doesn't matter, just for something for you to think about or write down. Um, and I'm just a big, guy on the quote, if you build it, right, they will come or it will come. And in that case, it is money for me. So if I create this awesome facility, if I'm building the brand right, I know long term, I am completely confident that I will be making a good, comfortable living. And that's all that really matters to me is that I can provide for myself, my family, you know, and do some things and be free. And I know if I continue this path, I'll be able to do that. And just in the meantime, I just do whatever I can just to, to make it by and still be able to run the business. So this video is going a little bit longer than I intended, but hopefully you guys can see the value in what I'm trying to show and say to you guys. So these are just gonna be my last two tips for this video. Um, but this is just a quick little example of how to make money or how I make money. Uh, you wanna have different revenue streams in terms of fitness because just running the gym, in all honesty, isn't going to probably make you a full-time income. So you have to get creative. And it's all about the cash flow, like I said, and the revenue stream. So for me, I have memberships, there's training, okay, whether it's group or personal. Uh, then we have online programs, which I do for people. There's YouTube, which isn't making me a ton of money right now, but over time, as I get more subscribers and more viewer in that AdSense, that will be something I can put into the monthly budget. There's also seminars, which I would love to get involved with or other people in the fitness industry do. Uh, there's clothing companies, which I'm sure you've seen involved with fitness. And then there's also consulting. Now, what you would do, and I wanna make a whole other video for this, is a sales funnel or a sales ladder where you start with that free content and then you go up little by little. So for me, it's like the free content is everything I put out and then I have the basic programs which are from $15, $25. I have $20, $25 online programming for the Team Iron Lions. Then I go up to some of the memberships in the gym which range anywhere from $75 to $150. Then there's online programs which are around the same price bracket. Uh, then there's seminars and clothing. So seminars are gonna be more expensive than clothing and you kinda of just stagger that ladder at a minimal to a maximum where someone's gonna pay you for free all the way to maybe $10,000 for some sort of seminar or whatever like that. Uh, but that's just how you make money and you can drive that sales funnel over time. My last one is more personal. Um, so I'm very big in self-development, self-awareness. If you guys wanna separate, separate yourself from good to great, this is something that's key. And you'll talk to any you know, special forces guy, you'll talk to any top athlete in the world, and this is all things that they do, and I do believe it makes a difference, and it helps boost confidence as well. Uh, but that's like vision boards. I've created boards, right, at just a, like a poster board, and put pictures of things, whether it's gyms or meeting people, things that I want materialistically, uh, how I want things to look, how I want my life to be, and I stare at it every single day. And when I do that, what it does, it causes my actions to go more towards those goals, right? If you had something that you really wanted and the price point on it in front of you every single day, 
you better bet that you're gonna make some better decisions on how you're saving or using your money to get to that goal. So I have that all over in my bedroom, which you guys can watch my old videos on when you see my room. Uh, all the things have actually become realities on my vision board, which is crazy. Right over here, I this is my original post that says the lion's den and the date that I was gonna open it, and then I have 20K per month, and I always have some sort of phrase, and that one says, I'm the king. So uh, I look at that every single day, and I make those things become realities. The other one that I had is, you know, setting goals, very basic, creating action plans, executing those plans, doing collaborations with people, which really helps get you more, um, you know, get you more recognition out there in the world, and then affirmations. Like I said, I'm gonna kill this, I'm gonna execute this, I have to make this happen, I have no other choice, I am a champion. Like, just saying those things every day. You know, that's the difference of going up to a deadlift and being like, I'm not gonna get this, no way. You've already lost the battle. You go up, I'm gonna kill this, I'm gonna murder it, like whatever I gotta do, you're gonna have a better chance of actually pulling that weight off the floor. Call me crazy, but it works. The last one, and that's the biggest one that people have a problem with, is patience, being patient, okay? This was a four to five year journey for me just to get here. And I'm at the bottom right now. Like I'm not even killing it or anything like that. I'm just trying to help people. Uh, but I'm at the bottom. It's taking me four to five years to get there. A lot of people see me on YouTube. I've been making YouTube videos for like six years. They were horrible. <laughs> but you know, when people see me now, they're like, oh, you look a lot like blah, blah, blah. Or you do videos a lot like so-and-so. Guys, I've been doing this for six years. Not a lot has changed. You know, I'm trying to get better progressively, uh, but I've been in the game for a while. It took me six years just to get recognized. So you have to be patient and know it's a long haul, right? There's really is no overnight success, and that's one of the hardest pills to swallow sometimes, is you want that quick fix, that instant gratification, and that's not how it works. You gotta just be putting in work day in and day out when no one's watching, when nobody sees you know, what's going on behind the scenes, and you have to have that faith, right, that down the road all this is gonna happen and you just can't quit. You can never quit. That's like my ending to this whole thing. Do this over and over and over again every single day. Create your catalog of things that work, things that didn't work, and the things that work, you keep doing. If they didn't work, you stop doing them. And if you keep putting that hard work in, right, it's going to happen. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this. This was, uh, you know, part two of this whole series where you learn more about the business, what you gotta do to start the business, what kind of business you're gonna choose, how much you're gonna make, how much I make, and uh, yeah, so we'll tune in, I'll do a part three. I gotta figure out what I'm gonna do part three on, but it's gonna be good, and I'll probably just tie in everything and close it out, and hopefully you guys enjoy it. So thanks, peace.